Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll be continuing our revisit for the like each of the centers of triangle. Uh, like if you remember in our previous videos, we were done. We were done like with the ortho center, and in today's video we'll be revisiting the n center again. But now, like of course, we'll be introducing much more like uh, actually much more like details. Let's say discussion for like these centers and especially like uh, the end center of course in this video and we'll be really really uh, needing these in like lots of math olympiad geometry questions so what are we waiting for let's get started all right so as you can see here in our diagram we have like lots of points so let's like break what exactly each one of these like are so first of all, we have a simple triangle, a triangle ABC. Let's like name the points A, B, and C. And we just took the, the end center I, which is like, of course, the meeting point of the uh, three angle bisectors, internal angle bisectors. So this point here is just I. All right. What exactly is this point here? Well, for any point, like for any triangle, we have an end center, which is just the meeting point of the uh, three internal angle bisectors. But remember, we have internal angle bisectors, but also we have external angle bisectors. For example, like here, uh, we have like the triangle, uh, like oh, let's say the angle ABC, this angle here. What is the internal angle bisector? Clearly, it's BI, this one. So this is B over two, and this is B over two. But guess what? We also have an external angle. What is like the external angle of uh, ABC? It will be like this, this one here. If we extended this like uh, segment here, we will see that this is the external angle. So what is the external angle bisector? It will be something like here, like cutting this into uh, two equal angles. Well, of course, because like uh, this angle here uh, is like B, then this one is 180 minus B. So this one like will cut it into two equal parts. So this one should be 90 minus b over 2 and this one should be 90 minus b over 2 uh, of course this is like a, like always the, the measurement of the uh, like external angle uh, bisector like when you have an external angle bisector these are the measurements uh, all right so guess what if you take just the external angle bisectors of angle b and angle c then they will meet like at one point which is like the point that we have already drawn let's call it simply i a um, so if we just like draw this, this is the external angle bisector of C, this is the external angle bisector of B, of course that means just if we draw these, uh, like this will be equal to this and this will be equal to this, but furthermore it turns out that uh, it also lies on AI, so like uh, on the internal angle bisector, so we also have of course this is equal to this. Like this is just uh, like a, well, a well-known like property. You can like uh, feel free to try to prove it, but we're not proving it because it's really like a well-known fact. So, okay, like what exactly uh, does that uh, give us? Okay, that simply just defines our point IA. Uh, usually we call this point the A X center because clearly we just have one in center. We don't need to name it. But for the X centers, we have three X centers for each like uh, vert vertex. For example, this one is called IA meaning like it's the A X center. We also like have uh, the B X center and the C X center uh, defined similarly. All right, very good. Okay, mm, so now what? Well, guess what? If we have an internal angle bisector, B I for example, let's say, and we also take the external angle bisector, which is B I A, well, let's just Remember, what was this angle here? This angle clearly is B over 2, right? B over 2. What about this angle? What was it? Well, clearly we said that this is like 180 minus uh, B. So this is just uh, like 180 minus B over 2. So that means it's 90 minus B over 2. So this one here is just 90 minus B over 2. But wait a minute. Like, what is this angle then? It's B over 2 plus 90 minus B over 2 exactly it's just like 90 so this one here is 90 so forget like about this here these things here we, we actually always have this nice property always it's like a fact 
if you take any angle, whatever this angle is, and draw the the interior the interior like angle bisector and the exterior angle bisector, they're always like perpendicular to each other. So this is a very like nice thing. Of course, we can apply it for the IC and I like IAC as well. So let's draw that, and let's draw that as well. You'll also get that. This is ninety. All right. This is very nice actually. In fact, if you just take a closer look here in our diagram, you will immediately get a result. I, B, I, A, C. This quadrilateral is cyclic. Exactly, because simply, this is 90 and this is 90. Two opposite angles, they are like com uh, complement, like they complement uh, each other, like uh, complete each other, sorry. Uh, so simply, what does that mean? Uh, simply that means we have a cyclic quadrilateral, which is I, B, I, A, C. Let's like write it here. I, B, I, A, C. This is a cyclic quadrilateral. All right. Of course, we know what is the center of this like cyclic quadrilateral uh, because we know that uh, I, I, A is the diameter. Because remember always when you have like a 90 degrees here, uh, then you know what is the center of uh, like this it's already like the, the midpoint of the uh, like hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse here is I, I, A, like this one here. So we know like the midpoint of it, let's call it like M, is indeed the, uh, the center of the circle. So let's call like the, this, this center is M. Let's call it M. Well, clearly you can see from this figure that apparently M will lie actually on the circumcircle of ABC. This is like really funny, right? Like all our points like that we're discussing, they always like somehow uh, tend out like just falling on the circumcircle of ABC. In the previous video, we discussed the reflection of the orthocenter. Both of the reflections like just slide on the circumcircle of ABC. And now uh, in today's video, we're just discussing that uh, the center of this circle, B, I, uh, C, I, A, also like lies on the circumcircle. But of course we need to prove that. So let's do that simply. Okay, how can we show that? Uh, like if we like just take A, I, and it cuts like uh, it hits the BC, like sorry, the, the, the arc BC at point M, then this point indeed is the center of uh, that cyclic quadrilateral. Well, to show that it's the center of the cyclic quadrilateral, you just need to show that it's the center of uh, just this one, BIC, right? The triangle BIC. Because guess what? If you can just can show that, uh, like it's the center of BIC, it is the same as IA, because we already know this is a cyclic quadrilateral, right? So we just now need to show that uh, like this point M satisfies that MI is equal to MB equals to MC. Okay, so now we're defining M in another way. We're defining M to be uh, the intersection of AI with the circle, with the like circumcircle. And now we need to show that this M satisfies that MB equals MC equals MI. That's like what we need to, what we need to prove right now. Okay, so let's now like forget about IA for now. We can like even delete it. Mm, so now, what do we need to prove? Okay, we just need to take uh, MB and MC, and we just need to show that these are all equal. Well, take a look. Right now, MB is equal to MC. This is like actually obvious. The reason is simple. We have just like the angle bisector of uh, angle A, so that means these two are equal because like this angle is equal to this angle. So that means this angle is equal to this angle. So this is just an isosceles triangle. So, okay, this is like already obvious. So now our job is just to show that uh, these two are equal. That will be enough. So let's like forget about this actually. Let's just focus on proving that this one is isosceles, this triangle here. Let's just for like uh, focus here. All right, we just need to clearly find this angle here and uh, this angle here and this angle here. Okay, let's start with this one here. What is this angle? Well, it doesn't appear that we know it immediately, but do you remember what was this angle? This angle, you should remember it because I told you like to memorize it when we discussed uh, that uh, like in our previous lesson when we discussed the incenter. It was 90 plus C over 2. So this angle from our previous discussion is 90 plus C over 2. So guess what? What is this angle? It's the complementary of it. So it's just 90 
minus c over 2. All right, very good. We have our first point. What about the other one? Well, uh, that's actually not uh, hard at all. Uh, this one, in order to find it, uh, you can just simply see that uh, this one here, we can break it like into two, into two pieces actually. This one and this part. So this part here correspond to arc MC. And arc MC is just like the same as this, right? So that means it's just A over 2. So we can just say that this is A over 2. What about this one here? Well, this one is already very easy. It's just B over 2, right? So B over 2. Okay, so wait, let's write that here. So that means I, B, M is equal to A over 2 plus B over 2. And M, I, B is equal to 90 minus C over 2. Wait, they, these, like, are they equal? They don't appear to be equal. Well, like, don't be fooled. Like, uh, they are equal, actually. Because we remember, we all, like, we always know that A plus B plus C is 180, right? So what is A over 2 plus B over 2 plus C over 2? It's just 90, right? So that means this, if we add, like, C over 2 and subtract C over 2, this will be just 90 minus C over 2. So guess what? Indeed, they are equal. So indeed, we, ha we have an isosceles triangle. And indeed, I, uh, or sorry, like M, is uh, the center of triangle BIC. And hence, we, we have found like our center for the big, uh, like cyclic quadrilateral, BICIA. Okay, so actually, what is this point M? This point M like can be defined in like lots of ways. First of all, you can simply say uh, this point M is the intersection of the angle bisector with the circle. Like this is the simplest uh, definition. Just like extend AI till it hits like uh, ABC, the circle, the circumcircle of ABC. This is one way to define it. Another way to define it is actually like uh, you can just say that uh, because we know that MB equals MC, that means M lies on the perpendicular bisector of side BC. Like M must lie on the perpendicular bisector. So like just like this. So you can simply also define it by saying it's the intersection of the perpendicular bisector of uh, BC with this circumcircle as well. But the really like the most uh, famous, the most common uh, like definition for it is just to say M is the midpoint of the arc BC. M is the midpoint of the arc. So like this arc is equal to this arc, right? Like MB is equal to MC. So that's simple. Like just the, the midpoint of the arc BC like, uh, it's just the center of B, I, C, I, A. That's, like, really, like, a uh, nice thing. In fact, like, I usually like to call this point the golden point. Because, like, it's really effective in lots of uh, math Olympiad questions. They simply, like, they, like, they are discussing a question. And somehow, like, for example, they might tell you, let's uh, define the circumcenter of B, I, C. You just, like, say, wait, the, this, the circumcenter of B, I, C, this is the golden point. This is our midpoint of arc B, C. All right, so like let's agree that whenever like we have some like such point like the midpoint of this arc, let's agree to call it the golden point. Just like to make this like a uh, lemma, like the center x center lemma, to like make sure you memorize it. Don't forget it. Okay. So the what is the center of the uh, like uh, the cyclic quadrilateral? It's just the golden point M. Okay. So as a summary, now we like uh, whenever like we have uh, like for example a question that. We, we have I, the end center, and IA, the X center, appearing in the question. Or when we like have a, a question that maybe the golden point, which is the midpoint of arc BC, appearing in the question, we, we should already like, okay, know that, okay, come on, we have some tools we can do. Because remember, in geometry, the more theorems you know, the more like stuff you know, the like better you are, and the more likely you will solve the question uh, by like, for example, you might think about some constructions that other students, other participants don't think about. Why? Because you already know, for example, if I just put this point, I will get a really nice cyclic quadrilateral. So you'll be able to do, like, for example, some angle chasing. But other students who are like, not familiar with this point, they might like, suffer a lot until like, they reach uh, like, the thing that you already know. Like it's a well-known theorem or a well-known uh, thing. Not that well-known, but like, uh, if you train hard, like, you, it will be well-known for you. All right. So uh, like right now, we've discussed the end center. And in our previous lessons, we discussed the ortho center. Uh, so like I think in the next video we'll be discussing just the tangents 
uh, like if you remember we discussed the cyclic quadrilaterals but we did not like really discuss anything about the tangents of uh, the circle so these are like uh, pretty important like they always appear in math olympiad like the, for example you have just a circle and you draw a tangent so we really need to discuss that in details uh, all right so i hope you really guys enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video